uh, announcement first. Okay, now, uh, first of all, just about your quiz number one starting next week. For your quiz number one, you can check the lectures page. I gave you the preparation guide, the complete details. There's also some example over there. You can just check it, okay? For lab number one, which you will be graded next week. So you can also see that the programming task has been po uh, posted since Tuesday. You can also get started early, okay? And for your lab test one, which is not next week, but the week after, I'm gonna give you also a preparation guide for how to do well uh, tomorrow. I'll, I'll prepare for that tomorrow and make it available, okay? So that's about the announcement. Okay, the plan for today, I would like to finish about the elementary programming lectures and then uh, we'll try to do a little bit of selection if we have time. But at least the elementary programming part will be covered in your quiz. I'll make it more precise after the lecture. We'll see how we go, okay? Okay, so let me just talk about, let me go over some little bit slides and then we'll talk about the two subjects, which some of you actually encountered that when you were trying to do this week's uh, exercise. It's really about when you try to, let's say, assign an integer to a double variable versus if you try to assign a double value to an integer variable. You have to distinguish between these two scenarios, okay? So now let's have a look. So uh, there are two terms you have to know. One is called coercion. The other term is called cast. Uh, the number one distinction, coercion is something it will be done for you automatically at the runtime, okay? It will be done automatically. Cast, which is, uh, which is in the next slides, it is something you have to do manually by yourself. If you didn't do it, it's going to be a compilation error. Okay, so let's talk about coercion first. That one's easier because it'll be done automatically. Let me just show you the example right away, okay? So now let's have a look at uh, this example over here. The first one, we have double value one is assigned to three times 4.5, right? So we said that this is the right-hand side of the assignments, okay? So now let's think about what exactly is uh, being performed over here. So we have a multiplication over here, and then the right-hand side is actually a double number because it has a fractional part. And the left-hand side is actually an integer without a decimal point. So this is exactly where the coercion is going to occur automatically. So this is the principle. Whenever you're doing some operation over there where at least one side is already a double number. So this one has a fractional uh, part, so it's a double. Automatically, automatically, Java is going to assume the left-hand side is also going to be a double number, okay? However, this one is only an integer. How can we easily convert a, an integer into a double number? Very easy, you just add a fractional part to it. In this case, it will simply be converted automatically to 3.0, okay? And then when we try to do this particular multiplication, it's going to be a double number multiplied double number after the coercion. And this is going to be uh, 13.5. Okay, that's the right-hand side. And then we can store 13.5 into the double variable. Okay, that's coercion. Very easy. It's simply done for you automatically by Java at the runtime. Let's have a look at another example over here. Let's say example number two. If you look at the second line, this is a little bit different. Coercion will still be performed, but at a different timing. Okay, in the previous one, coercion was done when we try to do the multiplication for three, right? So now, if you look at the right-hand side for the assignments over here, we're talking about a plus, okay? So now, the left-hand side for the plus is an integer, right? This is an integer. And this is also an integer. Integer plus integer will still be an integer, which means well, after I've done the addition, it's going to be nine. No coercion has occurred just yet. But now, we're saying that we're going to store this particular integer nine into a double variable value two. So this is where the coercion is going to occur, which means in order to store nine into value two, you can think about value two is a box that will store number with a fraction part only. You can, we can simply add a point zero to it. So this is where the coercion occurs. So it can be different timings. It's either when you try to store the variable to the, uh, uh, the value to the variable, or when you try to do the calculation. Okay, either case. Yes. Coercion is automatic. You don't have to do it by yourself. That's why I can't talk about it first. Okay, so now, okay, any question about coercion? That one's automatic, okay? Now, let's consider this particular example over here. 
Okay? Now, this is not going to be done by coercion. Coercion is adding something to the uh, integer by adding point 0, basically, right? Now, if you look at that, let's see exactly what's going to uh, happen. Again, if you look at the right-hand side, we are trying to do multiplication because one of them is already double. So the left-hand side is going to be coerced automatically to 3.0. Coercion is still there on the right-hand side. So what we will get for the right-hand side is 13.5 uh, over here, okay, 30.5. So far, so good. But now here's the problem. We are declaring a variable of type integer, integer type and value one over here, which can store integer only. So if you try to store 13.5 directly, it's going to be considered as a compilation error. So as is, it's simply just not going to work. Okay, so that's something new, which is gonna be talked about in the next slides. This is something for you as a programmer, you have to tell Java that in order to store 13.5 as an integer, I want to truncate the 0.5 part. Okay? Conceptually, this is what we want to do. We want to say, okay, let me draw again. So you got value 1 over here. And then, since we are trying to store 13.5, you want to say somehow I want to store only 13, which means the 0.5 is going to be truncated or just got eliminated. But you have to tell Java you want to do this. So this is something called cast, okay? which we'll talk about. And that's a syntax you have to know, right? Okay, the first one we talk about is about coercion. And what about casting? So now for casting, uh, one application would be, uh, let me just show you right away, okay? So now for, ca uh, for numerical, uh, so for casting, it's gonna be manual, which means you have to do it by yourself. Otherwise, you'll be compilation error. Let's have a look at one example. So there are two cases. So now when you do casting, you may cast from different direction. You may want to cast from double into integer, which is the current case. Or you may want to cast from integer up to double. So you have reason for both cases, but you have to know. You have to do that explicitly in order to achieve what you want to achieve. Let's have a look at case number one. So we are trying to cast from double into int so that we can store the value into the integer variable. But how do we do that? Over here, you can see that this is a double number over here, okay? And then you can see that we are trying to store that into an integer. As we said, this is not going to compile, okay? We just explained that. Now, what would be the syntax to write? The syntax to write would be as follows. You have to start with a pair of parentheses, and then you have to put some data type inside, but typically just integer, int, in this case. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to tell Java that at the runtime, when you see whatever that's being cast over here, truncates everything after the decimal point, which means 3.141529 uh, six is going to be truncated so that it contains only three. And once you have done the cast, three is going to be stored into value two. Okay, that's about cast. That's one way of casting. You're saying that if you're trying to cast an integer, uh, sorry, if you're trying to cast a double number, you're basically truncating everything after the decimal point. So the double becomes an integer. That's case number one, okay? Case number one is also very easy. You can typically be warm about a compilation error, okay? If you didn't do the cast from double to integer. Case number two is much trickier. Case number two, let me just uh, tell you, uh, anticipate a little bit for you, and then we'll go to case two by studying example. Case number two is like this. Remember in the tutorial video, when we talk about division, we say that you might get quotients if both sides for the division are integers. If any side happens to be a double number, then you will get a slightly different result, right? Okay, let me just uh, tell you that, the insight. For example, if you try to do nine divided by two versus nine divided by, let's say, 2.0, okay? Basically, these two lines are going to produce different results, right? In the first case, it's more like a review, okay? So we can know when to use cast. In the first case, both sides are integer. So it's going to give you the quotients. So it's gonna be four in this case, right? And for the second case, at least one side of the operand is actually not integer. In that case, it's going to give you something that will have the fractional part. You can think about some kind of coercion will, that will be done as well. You can think about at the runtime, also this will be coerced into 9.0. So you're basically doing 9.0 divided by 2.0. In this case, you will simply get 4.5, right? 
OK, here's the thing. We want to be very careful when we try to do division. Sometimes you want the quotients, but sometimes you actually want uh, double. Uh, sorry, sometimes you want quotients, sometimes you want the precise result with the fractional part. Okay. So now, how do we tell the difference? Especially, let's imagine that. If you say integer x is assigned to, let's say, input dot next int, okay? And integer y is input dot next int. Let's say we got two integers from the keyboard, right? Now, if we want to calculate the average between the two numbers, in that case, if you simply say, uh, for example, I say double, average, for example, is assigned to x plus y divided by, let's say, 2. Let's say I simply say that, right? I can tell you that this program here is not going to crash, it's going to compile, but it has a logical error in the following sense. I'll brief you very quickly, and then we'll go to the cast to talk about a complete story. Let's say over here, the user enter, for example, 5. And for the y, they enter 2, 5 and 2. So what is going to happen over here is, 5 plus 2 is going to give you 7, and 7 is an integer. 2 is also an integer. 7 divided by 2 will give you the quotients, not the precise result, which means it's going to give you 3. That's not what you want. Okay? And now, you might be thinking about a very naive solution. What if I write the following? So I used to write x plus y divided by 2, which will only give me the quotients because x and y, they are integers. What if I try, for example, x point 0, right? It's not going to be valid syntax, okay? Because the variable, you just cannot say point 0 to say, I want to add point 0 to the end to convert that into a double. If you want to somehow convert that into a double, you have to do some explicit cast. So that's the second case, okay? So now, let's see exactly how you can do. So now, let's consider case number two over here. So we got so many cases over here, just enumerate all the possible uh, all the possibilities, so we can study them uh, very carefully. Okay, so now let me just use a different example over here, right? So now you can also, uh, I also made the source code available to you. You can also try it out on Eclipse. I do encourage you to try. Let's say, uh, let's say the first one. Let's do one by one. Don't be distracted by others, okay? Uh, the first one over here, let's use green. If I try one divided by two, so now, all the uh, examples over here will be about integers, about divisions. So only focus on the types for the operands over here, right? The first example here, 1 is an integer, 2 is an integer. We'll only get a quotient, so that's why we get 0. Okay, the first one is easy. Now, the second one is actually some new syntax. Uh, why don't we, well, we learned about cast already, but let's see uh, the syntax again. I used to write 1 divided by 2. Now. For the second case over here, I'm trying to say the following. I'm telling Java, I want to convert somehow 1 into 1.0. Java wouldn't do it for you automatically. You have to tell Java to do it. So what I would do is, I'll do a cast. I can say double over here. And then, so let me just for now to be very safe. Every time you want to do an operation, if you want to force this particular operation to occur first, use a pair of parentheses. I'm going to say, do a cast to 1 and do it first before the division. Okay, that's a syntax. Okay, so what this will do is, at the runtime, this particular part is going to be cast, since I'm trying to cast integer into double, right? It's going to be 1.0. As soon as I got 1.0 on the left hand side, that means at least one side is not an integer, right? So now I get 1.0 divided by 2, I will get 0.5. Okay, that's the second example. Now, the third one is symmetric to the, sec uh, to the uh, second one. The third one is saying that, well, rather than making the first, uh, the left operand to be a double, why, do, why not I make the right operand to be a double? That's exactly what I'm doing here, right? You can see I'm trying to do a cast over here to say double two, and then I use a pair of parentheses to force it to occur first before the division, right? That's the uh, second way. Now, Let's go a little bit extreme. You just want to be 100% safe. It's a bit redundant, but it still works. I want to cast both sides to be double. Okay, I simply do a cast over here, and then I also do a cast over here. Okay, that also work. Okay, so now what we have seen so far, two, three, and four all work. However, number one doesn't work. 
Okay, just make sure you understand that. Now, let's talk about some interesting cases. I kind of uh, told you to actually add a pair of parentheses to force the order of evaluation. I do encourage you to do that, but you are not so sure which one will be evaluated first. So now, here's, here's, uh, here are two scenarios for you to compare. Let's do five and six together, okay? If you look at five over here, uh, let's say red. If you look at number five and number six, okay? Let's see, syntactically speaking, how are they different? Well, first of all, they both have double here, double here. They're both trying to do a cast. But somehow, for, uh, for line number six, we are trying to force this division over here to be done first because we got pair of parentheses over here, right? Okay, let's have a look at number six. It'll be easier to figure out what the answer would be. What would be the answer from number six? Well, think about what's going to happen over here, right? So now I'll write down exactly what's written there. We do a cast over here, and then, however, we force the 1 divided by 2 to be evaluated first. So that means, at the runtime, this part will be evaluated first. That part there, integer, integer, which will give you the quotients, right? 0, and then you do a cast to 0. That means what you will get is 0, 0.0. Okay, be careful. And now, what about number five? Number five over here is something over he uh, that will also work. But I would say for number five, if you forget about the rule, you better be safe. Try to use either two or three or four. Number five goes like this, okay? Number five, uh, let me write it down too. It's like this. We got double over here, and then we got one divided by two, okay? So now, this is something called precedence of the operator. Okay, precedence. Precedence of the operator. The easiest way to think about it is, if you, you can think about an, uh, as, as an analogy. You can think about over here, for the cast operation over here, you can think about it is a little bit like a multiplication. Okay? And for the division over here, it's a little bit like a addition. Which means, when you don't have any brackets over there to force the order of evaluation, whichever operation that got the higher precedence should be evaluated first. In this case, the cast operation over here has a higher precedence than the division. Which means, when you don't have any pair of parentheses over here, which one should be evaluated first? The cast. Which means, it's going to do this one first. It will do the cast from 1 to 1.0, and then do the division. Now, when you do the division here, the left-hand side is already a fractional number, a double, which means 1.0 divided by 2 will give you 0 0.5. So this also works. Okay? So now we talk about six different cases that you can ever encounter. Right? It's more like an explicit numeration about whether to add a pair of parentheses or not, or where to put a cast or not. Okay? Which part to put? Any question about this? Yes. So if you want to cut the parentheses, you need to like make a blanket double one divided by two. Yes. Uh, you mean the syntax about the cast, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me just explain the syntax quickly again. Okay. Yeah. So the syntax is really like this, and feel free to apply that maybe to your lab exercises already. Okay. So now let me just go one more time. Okay. Add page below, and then so the cast itself goes like this: a pair of parentheses like this, and then you have to put something in, in here. In case number one, you put int inside. In case number two, you put double inside, right? And then, after the pair of parentheses, you put something here, right? It can be, for example, a variable. You can put x over here. Or you can put maybe 4 over here, right? You can also put maybe 3.14, right? Okay, so that's kind of the syntax you want to learn. And a little bit extra complication, if you want to force this has to be done first. You have to put another pair of parentheses to force it. I would say it's always safe. Yeah. So this, the blue pair over here, the blue pair is part of the syntax for cast. So this is the syntax for cast. The orange over there is a little bit different. The orange over here, the orange one over here is really about the order of evaluation, right? They serve for different purposes, right? Questions? Can you cast the strings? K 
can you cast a string? I don't think you can cast a string. I would say, well, as far as this course is concerned, we're only going to talk about cast in this, uh, in this scenario that we just talked about. Later on, if you're going to take 2030, you will learn about something called inheritance, which is much more advanced, in which case you'll talk about casting for other scenarios. But for this course, only these examples, okay? Any questions? Yes. Oh, good question. The question was, so for two, three, and four, which one should you use, right? The answer is you can use any one of them. Okay, but I would say number four over here is a little bit redundant. You only have to cast just one side. You don't have to cast both, but it still work. Okay, but I would say if I give you multiple choice, I might give you, for example, from one to six, I ask you to choose which ones doesn't work or which one works, right? You should be able to judge, uh, to judge as well. But for you as a programmer, you can write either two or three or four, or even five, uh, or even over here, five, right? Both, uh, all of them work. Yeah, but for, number, but for number five over here, it wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend so much. You can be easily confused, okay? But I would say, uh, as long as you know what you're doing, you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, so that's about casting. Let's do some examples all together to reinforce our understanding, okay? Everything has been covered here. Okay, so now let's do exact exercises together, okay? So now let's consider fragment of Java code, which is on your slides. Basically, it can be a nice warm-up for your quiz, right? So now let's figure out exactly what the console output should be, okay? I'll give you maybe 30 seconds, okay? Think about what the output might be. You, can, you don't have to just look at each line to see what's going to happen, okay? And then we'll go over together. 30 seconds. Hmm? You mean too small? Too small? I can make it a little bit bigger if you don't, if you like. Better? Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Sometimes the font might be a little bit too small, but when you, if you need it, can you look at the slides or you can watch a recording either way. But anyway. Okay, let's do it together. All right. Number one. Okay, let's do one by one. Number one, basically, is it coercion or cast? Coercion, right? Oh, sorry, no coercion over here. So I beg, beg your pardon. Over here, this one's straightforward. We're simply storing a double number into double variable. So no coercion, no cast. So for number one, what we're doing here is we got D1 over here, which store double only. And then we store 3.141.5926 inside. Guess that's what one would do. Okay, let's look at two. Two over here, we want to print out, uh, let me just use the same color to save it. Okay, for number two, since in the other print line, D1 is, well, whatever that is stored in D1. In this case, 3.1415926, okay? And now let's look at number three. For number three over here, we're basically doing this. Okay, now, is there any coercion or a cast? Actually, there will be, actually, there's no cast, because if this was a cast, there should be the syntax over there, right? There was no such, uh, okay. Now, D1 is a double, and then double over here, so when you do D1 to D2, double to double, actually, there's no coercion, right? Okay, just trying to make sure you know how to judge, right? So now, what we will do is, we're going to declare another variable over here called D2, and then simply copy whatever that is stored in D1 into here. So 3.1415926, okay? So far, so good. And then when we try to execute line number four, D2 is, and then exactly what it is, okay? 3.1415926, okay? Let's now go to the next line. What about number five, okay? Now, here you can see there's a cast, right? We are trying to cast D1, which was declared as a double over here, we want to cast that into integer, right? Which means we want to truncate the fractional part. Let's do one thing at a time. This part over here is to, is to declare an integer variable called i1, which can store numbers without a fractional part only. And now we are tr in order to do that, we have to truncate whatever value that is stored in d1, the fractional part, right? Which means after the cast, we're only going to store three over here. Okay, after the cast. 
And now, let's see, for line number 6, we want to print it out, I1 is. And then I1, which will be 3. Okay? Good. Lastly, uh, over here, let's see orange. Okay, now, if we do number 7, now, coercion or cast? Can you see, no cast, right? Hopefully you can see the no cast, right? Cast should be very explicit. Is there any coercion? Let's try. Think, think about it before we see the exact result. D2 is of what type? Double. Okay, this is a double type. And we have some multiplication. Whether the result will be a double or integer depends on the operand. 5 is an integer. No question about it. I1 was declared to be an integer, so that's also an integer. Integer times integer will be integer. You're trying to store integer into a double, there will be coercion over here. So but how, how exactly is it? When you try to say I1 multiplied by 5 itself is going to give you an integer. And now D2, uh, let's see, I1 over here is 3, right? 3 multiplied by 5 will give you 15. So, so far, no coercion just yet. You only do an integer calculation, uh, multiplication. However, if you want to store 15 inside D2, which is a double, you're replacing whatever that's inside over here by not just 3, but 3.0. Okay, that's a coercion. And finally, when you execute line number 8, you would say D2 is 3.0. Is 15.0? Did I? Yes. Wow, thank you. Sorry about that. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I think 15.0, because we coerce 15 to 15.0. Thank you. All right. Any question about this? Okay. Good. Yeah, I would re highly recommend when you try to do this kind of exercise, you don't necessarily have to draw. But it's actually just easy for you to trace the program, when, uh, especially when things get complicated. Okay, first exercise, now exercise number two. Okay, let's do it a little bit more quickly. Okay? Now, over here, basically, it's a different type of question. We want to know what's, ex uh, there's no system that out the print line. We just want to know whether coercion will occur, or whether cast will occur, or there's going to be a compilation error. That's what we, what we want to see. Okay, over here, Number one, coercion or cast or compilation error over here. Coercion, right? You basically coerce 23 into a double variable D1. So that means D1 is going to be 23.0. Okay? Number two over here, okay, let's move a little bit more quickly. Now, number two, is it going to compile? No, because you just cannot store 20. Uh, some number with a fraction part into an integer. If you really want to do so, you have to do a cast. How would you do a cast? You gotta say integer. So by the way, this wouldn't compile, so I'll put a quest mark over here. What you have to write instead, maybe, would be I1 is assigned to do a cast to integer. That's case number one, 23.6. Okay, that's how you fix it. Now, the third one over here, nothing about coercion or cast. It's more about type correctness. Basically, what we're doing here is we have a character literal over here. You can see the single quotes with just a space. We are trying to store a character into a string. Okay? The answer is this will not compile simply because the two types are not compatible. You cannot store a string into character. You also cannot store a character into a string. Okay? Just not compatible. Coercion and cast only occurred about numbers. Now, if we look at similarly, you can see number four, it wouldn't compile either because we're trying to store a string literal, which is contain a space, into a character. That also doesn't compile, right? Okay. Now, let's look at, uh, finally, let's look at that. Well, you can see that over here, this is kind of valid, right? You're trying to cast 23.6 into 23 and then store the integer into an integer, okay? So this is good, okay? Number two over here, now, because I1 is containing 23, so we're basically saying 23 times 3 over here would be uh, 69. That's an integer, right? And then, now, coercion, right? If you want to store 69 into a double,
That means D1 over here is going to be 69.0. Okay, I'm a little bit bigger for you. And then for number three over here, okay, so now you got string S1. You want to store la, for example. That's fine. Okay, that is good. Okay, and then S2 over here, you can also say S1 plus another string. So now, how do I know if this plus over here is string concatenation or integer addition? You look at the operands. S1 was declared to be a string over here. So that's a string. The right hand side is a string literal. So that means this plus over here should be a concatenation. Okay, you simply uh, concatenate them together. Okay? Finally, if we look at line number five, is it going to compile? Okay, let's have a look at it together. Okay. First of all, we have a plus. So we have to judge to see what happens to both sides, right? Let's look at the right hand side. The right hand side is we are trying to say i1, which was declared as an integer, integer plus d1, which was declared as a double. So integer plus double will give you a double, right? Because of coercion. So integer plus double will give you a double because of coercion. Okay, that's good. So that means uh, the right hand side for the plus is a double. And now, what about the left hand side? Well, S2 over here was declared as a string. So this is a string. And what about D1? D1 was declared as a double. And as we know before, multiplication is simply not defined on string and double. So this is the part where you got trouble, right? So this part is not going to compile. Okay, so I, overall, this line is not going to compile. So this is really the kind of exercise you want to be familiar with. In uh, int plus double, yes, it's more like a coercion, right? Okay. And also int multiplied by double will also give you a double. Similar idea. Okay. So let's now see a final topic over here for elementary. Po oh, well, a few, a few more. So we have covered everything already. You can go over them. Okay. So now what I would like to do is some convenient syntax for you. Okay. Java is basically a C family language. So the syntax we're talking about right now is kind of inherited from the C programming language. For those of you who are engineers, uh, well, all of you are engineers, actually. For those of you who study electrical engineering uh, specifically, I'm pretty sure you learn about C later. And that's one of the syntax uh, you will encounter quite a lot in C programs. Okay, I'll try to explain some intuition to you. The idea is not difficult. It's just a syntax you want to get used to. Okay, let's first of all try to understand these lines over here, right? When I say balance is assigned to balance plus deposit, we pretty much know what that means. That means whatever value for balance is plus the deposit assign the addition result into balance, right? That's very easy. However, there is a shortcut for you. Okay, I will try to show you the process of reducing them. Okay, I'll, I'll make it even easier. It would be very often you want to write something like this. If I say i is assigned to what if i value is plus one, for example, right? Let's say this is something I want to do. You pretty much know what that means. Now this can be reduced if you wish. I plus plus. Okay, when can you do this? When the targets over here matches this guy here, part of the source. If it matches like this, I and I appear like this, then you can say I plus plus. Similarly, if you got something like this, which I also see what uh, some of you actually use that in your programming exercise, which is good. So now I is assigned to, for example, I multiplied by five, right? So I would be like a multiple of five. And you can reduce it in the same way. You can reduce it to I multiply equal five. Okay, it is slightly different syntax, but you know I'm just trying to say these are supported. Okay. Okay. And then uh, there's another. Oh, there's another thing I want to mention. Let me say one more thing. Okay, if I uh, if you got questions. So now let's. Uh, if you say I is assigned to I plus one. So there are two ways for you to reduce it. So uh, this is uh, redu reduction number two. Okay, reduction number one is you can say i plus equal 
1. OK? So basically, I'm saying the following. When you have the targets over here matches one of, uh, uh, part of the assignment source, you can reduce the syntax into either of the two options. Option number one, you can simply say, OK, the target over here, I'm just going to say plus equal 1. So implicitly means part of the assignment source should be i itself. Okay? Or you can simply say i plus plus. Okay? This is why when you see the second example over here, where you got i is assigned to i multiplied by 5, as you can see over here, uh, it repeats itself over here. You got i here, you got i here. So that's why you can say multiply equal. Okay? Uh, this syntax is not really required for you to write, but you're just supposed to know how to read them. Okay? That's my expectation from you. Okay, finally, I want to talk about another syntax that's kind of interesting. Okay? Okay, uh, I plus plus, J minus minus, uh, we talk about it. So now, it's very confusing that, and if you want to use the code, that's okay. You know, it's a lot of syntax. It's just a little bit confusing. Okay? Let me show you an example right away. Okay? Let's look at the code over here. Basically, the compl complications like this. Okay, we have, uh, let, let me just uh, trace the code together with you. Okay? Basically, from this line here, we got i, j, and k. i, j, and k. i, j, and k over here. 0, 0, and 0. 0, 0, and 0. Right? Let's only look at the line number 2. k is assigned to i plus plus. Okay? Okay. You might get some rough idea what it might mean, but okay, let me explain to you. This is how I remember it, okay? Let me just write it down. If I say k is assigned to i++, I would say in order for you to trace this program, try to rewrite it into something that's equivalent and much easier for you to understand, okay? Now, this is how you can intuitively remember it. Look at where plus plus is. The plus plus occur after the variable itself, right? That means the plus one effect is going to occur afterwards. Okay, so that means I can rewrite this guy here to be as follows. This can be rewritten to k is assigned to i, and then followed by that i plus plus. This is what it means. Because plus plus is immediately after the i. Symmetrically, if you look at another one, if you look at this one over here, how do we apply the same principle, but in a symmetric way? In this one, let's say I'll write it down. K is assigned to plus plus J. Now you can see the plus plus occur before this. Okay? So now that means we can rewrite this in the following way. It, it simply means J plus plus go first. And then whatever the new value for J is, after the increments, K is assigned to J. Okay? You can see the two comparison here. Right? In the case number one, because plus plus occur afterwards, so we do the plus plus later. And in the first case, plus plus occur before, so we do the plus plus first. Okay? It's very, very complicated. Well, it can be conf confusing. For this slide, I would say for this particular example, you know, having plus plus and either before or after in the same line, I will never test you on that. This example is only for your information. Okay? Now, but you know, for your own good, let's trace the program quickly. Okay? So now, let me try to do it. So now, when we try to execute this line, as we said before, this line is equivalent to k is assigned to i and then i++, plus plus, which means k is assigned to i, which will be 0, and then i++, plus plus, which means it will be incremented from 0 to 1. Okay? That's what it will do after this line. And then, let's do the second line. So what about this one here? k is assigned to plus plus j. That means k is assigned to j first, and then j plus plus. So how is it going to work? So k is assigned to j. So k currently 0 is going to be assigned to j, which is 0, right? k is still remain to be j, to be 0. Hmm? The plus plus is the plus. The plus plus is, oh, why am I making this? As I said, it's very confusing, right? Yeah. Let me do it again. Beg your pardon. Let me do it again. You're absolutely right. Let me just undo this part here. So what we should do over here is basically J++ and then K is assigned to J. Thank you. All right? 
And now that means I is going, uh, J is going to, be going to be incremented from 0 to 1. And then K is assigned to J, which is going to be assigned to 1. Okay, that's the final result. Okay, it's only for your knowledge for this particular example. However, the bottom line is, I would say for this one here, for this slides, up to now, you should know. Okay, just put the I++ plus plus or plus plus I in the same line. You don't have to know that for the exam or test. Okay, it's only for your knowledge. Okay, so now let me talk a little bit more about literals, which will be useful for you, uh, your lab exercises. Okay, so what I would do here, uh, so now, now you should be very comfortable with uh, uh, character literal A versus string A, right? You can see that in this particular case, if you try to print out the console uh, output, they will be the same, look to you the same. However, if you try to compare them, right? Let's say, uh, as we briefly talk about the equals equals operator, it's comparison. I'll talk about comparison briefly because it's a po uh, question on the forum. Equal equal simply means we try to compare two values. The principle for comparison is very simple. You only com compare something that's compatible with each other. In this case, you're comparing a string with a character, even though they look the same on a console, but you just cannot do that. So this wouldn't compile, okay? You, okay, like that. Okay, it's a type error. Okay, you can see the explanation over here. And I want to talk uh, a little bit about comparison of values. Okay, it's about when to use equal, equal, and when to use equals. I would say, for this course, as far as I can anticipate, the only place you have to use equals is you, when you want to compare string values. Okay, so now I'll give you one example. If I say a string S1 is reading from the user input, okay, I want to see if the string itself is, the, uh, is actually quit. So you cannot say S1 equals equals quits. This is going to compile, but it, it is not going to work. I'll make sure I make a very short video to illustrate to you so we can save some time in the class. What I'm trying to say is, Whenever you want to compare string values, always use equals. Okay? We all, uh, you will only learn about equals method in 2030, I'm afraid. For this course, you don't need to be bothered by that. Okay? Just take it for granted. Okay? Now, let's go to the other cases. How do you compare, for example, one of you asked me on the forum, how do you compare characters? Okay? For all other types, integer, double, character, boolean, easy, always use equal, equal. Okay. And for example, you got a character C1, which is assigned to A, and they want to see if C1 equals equals B. Right? In this case, should it be true or false? Right? C1 is storing A over here, sorry, A here. A equals equals B should give you false. Okay? Simple example. Again, a reminder. Every time when you want to compare string values, always use equals. If you use equal, equal, you will compile but you wouldn't get the expected result. There's a logical error, okay? You might need the equals method for lab test one, which I'll try to give you more information later. Okay, so now, uh, talk about escape sequence. I'll make it very short over here. Escape sequence basically say, for some special character that you want to print out to the console, you have to actually somehow put a forward slash in order to get it, okay? Here's a very uh, quick intuition for you, okay? I'll give you some intuition here. Let's say I want to print a double quote to the screen. If I simply say print line over here, and then I'll say double quotes, I know that whatever that goes inside should be a string, right? If I simply just put, if I, uh, which I'm going to use uh, maybe green, I want to print out just a single quote over here, right? Intuitively, I can see what you mean. However, this is not going to compile. Okay, It's a compilation error. Intuitively, this is how you can think of it. We know that every time when we see a single quote, uh, sorry, a double quotes, it can be either at the start of a string or it can be end of a string, right? It's, it's kind of symmetric. So in this case, it will be a start of the string, right? But now, when we see the green one over here, it's kind of confusing to the computer. Is it a start or is the end of the string? Actually, both can be true. It can be the end of the string, which means it corresponds to the previous one, or it can be 
the start of the string, which corresponds to the later one, right? Either way will work. It's confusion to the computer. So that's why it's considered as a compilation error. Similarly, if you try to print out single quote, and then you just put a single quote inside, that's also compilation error. For scenarios like this, where there might be confusion to the computer, you have to use something called escape sequence by using a backward slash. Okay? Let me give you an example so you can read, you can read the slides. So now, let's uh, see some example over here. The most relevant example so far is a print versus print line. Okay? Let's see that. Let's just uh, do it uh, smoothly. So let's say I got S1 being A, S2 being B. Okay? So now, when I say print and print, not print line, S1 and S2, how many lines would I get on the console? Two or one? One line, right? Good. Okay. Print simply means you don't have to put a new line after the print statements. That means you're going to print basically S1 followed by S2. So that means A followed by B. Okay. Now, the print line is how you can, th uh, I do have a rule for you. You can also go over the slides. Okay. Uh, I will show you here. When I have over here, um, you know what? This slide may not be the most up to date. When you download the latest slides, there's uh, slides after this called print versus print line. You can uh, download it. Okay, I will just give you an example over here. Well, when, I, when I consider these two over here, this is how I can see it. When I say S1 and S2, it is as if I want to print out S1 over here, which is A, and then I will put a new line after that automatically. And then followed by that, so that means I go to the second line, and then I print line S2, which will be B. So that's A followed by B. So the new, you can think about the LN over here is correspond to the new line character, which is backwards slash and N. So that's, like, uh, that's the escape sequence. Let's do one more example. How can we somehow simulate print line using print? This is the equivalence you can see. You can see we still got print, and then we say print S1, followed by, so this is concatenation, right? And then we say this is a new line. So what you will do is, it's going to do S1, concatenate it with a new line character, which is as if we put enter over here, right? There's a new line character. And then we print line S2, which is B. Sorry, S1 should be A. Okay, like that. Yeah, it's a very subtle thing you want to just try on Eclipse. Okay, let me just see this over here. And then escape sequences, and then uh, the identifiers and naming conventions. So these are something you can just read it by yourself. Okay, very easy. Okay, let me just say one more thing about the quiz, and then we are done for today. Just one more thing. So we have, we wouldn't have, we will not have time today to cover the selection just yet. But for quiz number one, what I would expect from you will be the similar level of difficulty as covered from the tutorial videos. Because we did talk about Boolean type, we did talk about Relational, relational uh, logical operators, and we also have some example for the if statement. Those are the things I expect you to know. We'll get to the more formal introduction to selection from Monday. Okay, I'll see you later.